So today I was following up on a podcast of um, Emmanuel Mwamba and our state council, uh, Mr. John Sangwa. And uh, Mr. Emmanuel Mwamba asked uh, Mr. John Sangwa a very, very, very interesting question. They asked him, who does he think uh, is the best Zambian president, starting from uh, from uh, KK to, to President HH? And his response was quite a very interesting one. And the most uh, fascinating thing about his response is that uh, this is the first time that I'm disagreeing with Mr. John Sangwa. Like I, for those of you that follow this channel, you must have known by now that I'm a big fan of Mr. John Sangwa, and I, I always even st I've always been even saying it that is one person that inspired me, like you know, to even like love politics and all that. So I'm gonna share with you uh, the podcast. But if you're joining this channel for the first time, please kindly do me a favor, like and subscribe. And um, I assume you've done that. So let's check out this podcast uh, on what his response was. And please make sure you, you watch until the end because I've got something to share with you at the end of the clip. Who do you think was, is, we've had seven presidents. Yes. Is the best president Zambia has ever had. And who do you think in your ranking is the worst president? I would, uh, we may have to exclude those that are like President Sata, because he never finished his, his term, and also President Banda, but also was in there for eight years. Uh, Banda was, was only a, Three years. a short period of time. But in historical context, this is how I would put it. I would put President Lungu and President Kaunda in the same basket. I would put President Hichlema and Frederick Chiruga in the same basket. Let me explain by what I mean by that. Kaunda inherited a good economy by 1991 that economy was trashed. So, seven, but at least it did that over 27 years. You had a debt of 27 billion, oh, or seven, seven billion. billion. Then you have President Lungu, who inherits quite a well, a, a good economy, very low external debt. I think when Arabi left power, the external debt was less than $2 billion. 1.5, President Michael Sata took over 1.5 billion. 1.5 billion dollars. But when President Lungu was leaving office, I think we have to be realistic. We, we cannot, uh, but numbers are there. And I always believe that uh, uh, you can't build a country through lies. You have to be honest about it. But at the time, 10 years, we had borrowed externally, well in excess of $15 billion. So, you get a good economy. And by the way, the exchange rate, when President Sartre took over, uh, I think on a rebased basis, would, would have been in today's terms would have been I think uh, one dollar uh, three quarter for every dollar. That's what it was. Three quarter with three quarter you'd buy a dollar. Today, uh, by the time Edgar President Lungu was living, I think the exchange rate had gone to I think his maximum was about twenty three quarter. Yeah, in July it was twenty three. But by the time he left in August, it had come down to around seventeen. That's right. Those were just basically sentiments. I think that was a reflection of the faith that uh, I'm not an economist, but for me, I'm looking at it to say that appreciation was simply a reading of the confidence of the anticipation of what President Ichilam was going to bring to the table. Uh, they expected discipline, expected good performance, and they expected really the opposite of President Brungu. But the decline of the quarter, of course, other than that, those issues, is also a reflection of loss of confidence in Ichilam's leadership. That is why you see the quarter is going crazy. So, I would classify them in those categories. Basically, you inherit something, you trash it. You inherit something, you trash it. For me, not because I if spent days with him for, for all these things, for, for years, I would classify Juba perhaps as the best president we ever had. Mm. Because he had to take the toughest decision that no president has ever taken in this country. You know, 
It's not easy to hurt people. It's not easy to introduce policies that you know will affect your people. But President Chiluba had no choice. In economic terms, what HH inherited from Lungu is paradise compared to what, what Chiluba inherited, inherited from, from KK. Kaunda. There was no economy there. Everything was just, you'd say it was like a desert, everything broken. But he took the tough decisions. But as usual, when you may introduce policies, you don't see immediate benefits. benefits. Mm. The appreciation of the quatuor, uh, remember the debt forgiveness came in about 2000. Into Manawasa's government. Into Manawasa's. But Manawasa was simply ripping off, was ripping from the policies of President Chiluba. Okay, because uh, it's like planting a tree. You will see the fruits maybe long after the person that planted is long gone. Perhaps the most difficult I think forward-looking decision that you ever made, in my opinion, was the decision to unbundle ZCCM, to sell it as... Because it was a, a, a monopoly. This a monopoly. Huge... It was a conglomerate. It was one unit with divisions. But the idea to break it up, sell mines individually to, to, to our various interested parties, I think that was the most brilliant decision which I think has transformed this country. Because... What would have happened, I have no doubt in my mind, if I thought they had sold ZCCM to one entity, which was the Cafio Consortium, what would have happened is that that consortium would have gotten ZCCM for next to nothing, and they themselves would have now started selling off the units. The units. And would have made billions. That have made far much more money, and perhaps it would have... And also that would have translated to having uh, one from public monopoly to one private, private monopoly. monopoly. The yes. same power now lying in the, in the, the private, private individuals sector. you can't mm. control. So that was so. These were tough decisions. People died. I know this for certain. People died during the time of Chiluba because of the policies. They and if Chiluba was weak, he would have faltered. But he assured the people, "We have no choice. We have." Uh, I think the slogan was. We have to eat sap in the morning, sap mm -hmm. for lunch, sap for dinner. We have no choice. We, we have, have to, to walk this. We path. have to walk this. Mm -hmm. now, those so basically, I, I like the way he grouped the, the, the presidents. He said we cannot count uh, uh, Arab B and we cannot count Vasata uh, because those did not uh, rule for a long time, which, which is fine. But uh, I did not agree when he said but FTJ is the best president of course i understand uh, may so rest in peace the late president ftg uh made took very difficult steps you know but the thing is that he is the one that uh, sold our minds but the biggest problem is not because he sold our minds it is for the prices he sold our minds and also uh uh in in the nature in which our minds were sold because when selling the minds he was he was supposed to make some agreements whereby the, the the government would still have like maybe a sort of uh, a large share in the mines and also uh, even the prices at which he sold the mines can you imagine they were selling like mines like KCM like for 50 million dollars it's like he, he practically gave away our natural resources to, to just white people he just practically gave away i understand people love him because he did something also good like selling uh, houses for just 10 kwacha yeah, that was the great thing he he, he gave to the, to the Zambian people. But what he gave, what, but what he gave to the foreigners, what he gave to the foreigners is way more than what he gave to the Zambian people. That that's that's just my my my, my opinion. I think President Chiluba gave more to the foreigners than he gave to the Zambian people, because like I said before, look at how much he sold the mines. KCM fifty million. Who does that? And that and that 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 fifty million, they did not even pay in cash. They did not even pay in cash. In one year, they, they, they made profits from the mines and paid off that, uh, that $50 million. So you can see that he really messed up our, our, our mines. Like he, he just gave it away. That's, that's, one, that's one major thing that I saw that Shuba messed up. And that thing even still haunts us today. We do not have control over our mines and our resources because of the, some of the agreements or policies that the late Shuba made during that time, that during the privatization time. So for the first time, I disagree with uh, uh, our state council, John Sangwa. So let me know, in your own opinion, who do you think is, has been Zambia's greatest president?